Welcome back, folks. Mm-hmm. This is a podcast known as Behind the Badge here at the Monroe County Sheriff's Office in Roch, New York. My name is Todd Baxter. I'm the sheriff of Monroe County, and we try and celebrate people in our community that have been behind the badge, working one way or another, and community servants, or they're in the badge and the uniform yeah. and what they do for a living. And today is uh, it's called a special episode for one reason. Ginny, you're here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's a reason. <laughs> but but I, was, uh, I was not going to do the show by myself when we have this gentleman in front of us. But yeah. So we called upon Ginny, who's a, just a, a great icon in our community, to help me out with wow, this. because. And uh, Don, before we introduce you, I, I went to Ginny just the other day and I said, give me some dirt. Just give what? Me That's a, what I was going to say. She give knows me some too dirt. much. Give me, she knows too much. Well, so she's a vault. Little... She's a vault. I'm yeah. a cop. I get dirt yeah. out of people for a living. She gave up nothing. She gave up. There is no she dirt on up. this man. <laughs> <laughs> no dirt. We'll see what the next half hour brings. There, there yeah, yeah. Be yeah. 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 If we're doing our job well, we'll yeah. get some dirt yeah. out of you. Yeah. With uh, Mr. Don Elhart, an icon in our community. I know we've been celebrating yeah. you for months and months and 58 years in mm. broadcast, a record in broadcasting, and the record in broadcasting for tenure, but... Um, and that's important, but I think more important, we all agree that you, you are the face of trust. You are the face of, mm-hmm. in, in some of the most controversial times of our, our, mm-hmm. our, you know, our, our experience here. Uh, and you always brought the information forward yeah. that we needed to have in a trustful, honest way. That's what I remember about you. Yeah. you know? If Don was saying it, it must be true. <laughs> so, and that's what we want on our media, yeah. right? We want to yes. hold the people accountable, like myself in power, uh, but be fair and yeah. be, you know, have empathy and compassion and uh, so we're here to talk a little bit about that. And yeah. You as a person, your beautiful bride, Mary, yeah. and whatever we get into. But uh, <laughs> I definitely am thankful Jenny yeah. joined us uh, to, to help share some of this. And, and uh, you know, I'll get dirt out of him soon. Yeah, yeah. So. well, I'm honored to be <laughs> here. Thank I'm, you for asking I'm me. nicknaming you The Vault. Yeah. The Vault yeah. is not oh, saying God, nothing. No. So, saying nothing. <laughs> but, uh, so how long did you guys work together in, in 35? 30, yeah, I was yeah. there 35 years, yeah. wow. and then what, 30 years on the 11 o'clock news, yeah. the night shift, if you will, wow. um, which you are all familiar with at the yeah. sheriff's department. I tend to think that may be the longest co-anchor running in this town. Oh, I you think. think so, yeah. 35 years. Yeah, we did. We're going to have to call it Guinness again. <laughs> look at all the records. Eh? <laughs> Let's do Let's it. Let's do another I don't think yeah. I qualify anymore, <laughs> but boy, does time fly, yeah. though. I know it's a cliche, it but you look back, I mean, on your 58 years, mm-hmm. it does not seem like that. Yeah. When you take in to consideration what you witnessed. Yeah, you know, walking here today, just walking up the steps by the Hall of Justice over to the building here. And I remember this. I mean, Al Skinner yeah, was the yeah. sheriff when I started think about in that. 1966. And uh, I had Frank Valetti and the the mob the trials mobs. are underway, and we were out there with film cameras and you know equipment, you know nothing like we have today, uh, trying to capture all of these uh, you know trials and and not having that ability to do it as rapidly as we mm-hmm. do now or yeah. did now. Yeah, yeah. got to go back and cut the tape, right? Yeah, and yeah. Put it all together and all those cliches and yeah. that we use now. You know, I mean, look at I mean, looking yeah. at some of that footage back <laughs> then. That <laughs> What is above all that? was the weather bird. We had a weather. We had a weather bird, and they actually they actually had me put clothes on that weather bird to, for whatever the forecast was. So we had a weather bird with an umbrella. We had a weather Are bird smiling for the, and that was the you know the way we we delivered the weather. Wait, well, I, I who gotta, who had was, to dress the bird? Can you that, just tell that, me that? that was it? That was my job. That, you know. <laughs> to dress the bird. Oh yeah, yeah. Depending on the weather, you had to do everything. You had to Did do, you know, start on the weather, or is that just something? I started. Like, you know, and that was duty. interesting. I started, uh, well, actually, I started the summer of 65. Oh. Uh, I had worked at Channel 8 uh, as, a, as an engineer during the summers. There's the picture right there, oh, yeah. ironically, <laughs> coming up now. Uh, and Love for it. three summers out of high school, I had a chance to basically fill in for whomever was on vacation. Uh, and it, it was the most incredible job a young kid when i applied there they said what do you want to apply for i said anything Mm -hmm. (laughs) i'll empty the ashtrays because people smoked in the building (laughs) i said i will clean the i'll do anything i want to be in the building it's Mm -hmm. called work uh yeah yeah i was the same way and uh so i you know they said well they hired me for summer relief engineer and i at that point i could queue up a record on a turntable but that was about it right Uh, by the end of that first summer i was depending on Mm -hmm. who was on vacation i'd be in the film lab one week I'd be running studio camera for Tom Decker and Bob Mills and the, the news and weather. I'd be on the radio side because it was yeah. AM, FM television. I'd be on the radio being you know, the engineer for Gary Smith or Joe Cullinane recreating Red Wings games. Because if there was a game in Buffalo, we didn't, they didn't have remote right, facilities. Right. 
So Joe Cullinane would sit in a studio like this. He had a mitt, small mitt in one hand, a no. little, a little no. bat, <laughs> and and then he would have this ticker. They would feed him a ticker, and it was you know and he go, I ah, says swing it a miss, and he sound effects. And then yeah. I was the engineer. I'd bring the crowd noise up or whatever I had to do. We would recreate a Red Wings game. Uh, so I I could be an engineer one week. So anyway, Na- Naomi you know. would really appreciate you now, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so by the summer, we win every game. Yeah, but, <laughs> and it was interesting when I was a kid. My brother and I would go out in the car in the driveway because the car radio could pick up Buffalo radio stations, and we'd listen to the Buffalo broadcast, and then we'd tune. You know, we'd be five ten minutes later right. before that inning could be, you know, recreated on the Rochester uh, in the Rochester way. So summer '65, I I had done this for three years. I really wanted to, to do something on the air, or at least try on the air, and uh, went to Channel 13. Uh, and at that time, they had an opening for a booth announcer, I think it was. And they told me, well, you really don't have the right timber. Timber. <laughs> you don't have the timber to be an announcer. <laughs> so why don't you go down to the news department? We hear there's an opening down there. <laughs> so I go down to the news department, and uh, there's you know, one, one reporter is all they had. And she had just left. Harriet Bishop went on to a very successful career in, uh, in Florida. And uh, they said, well, you know, we really need somebody full time, and you're going back to school in the fall. So I said, "Well, how about this? You know, hire me to do this while you look. Right. That way, you fill the position. If I work two weeks, three weeks doing this, I'll mm-hmm. be thrilled." And they go, "Well, yeah, why not?" So I ended up working the whole summer. Uh, by the end of the summer, they said, "You sure you want to go back to school and finish?" I said, "Yeah, I think I really do." Well, we can't make any promises, you know? right, right. <laughs> but when I did graduate the following year, uh, we went from one reporter to two, I think, in the news department. So I had that that chance really to to grow with sure. it from the the very beginning. So sixty five. But you created yeah. so many opportunities for yourself mm-hmm. at Channel Eight yeah. when you got to Channel Thirteen. When yeah. you walked into the newsroom, I mean, those are things that yeah. you kind of pushed the door open. It was open a little bit, yeah. but yeah. you know, you went the whole yeah. way. You ha- you have to have the thirst for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, one of the pictures that, that comes up here, and when it does again, I'll point him out, is my fifth grade teacher, uh, Donald Netzker, and uh, when he comes up, this is the fifth grade teacher who was beyond creative when it came to c- curriculum. Uh, he would take one whole semester or whatever it was teaching you, and we would put on a play. But he would weave all of the lessons that had to be learned into right. this right. play. Mm-hmm. Uh, there he is right there, Don. Oh, wow. That's good. Uh-huh. And he built a little radio station in the corner of our classroom. In fact, I was back to Indian Landing School uh, about a month ago. They celebrated their 75th anniversary. Yeah. Wanted me to come back and speak, and I told them about what it. What time was that? This is in Brighton. It oh, was right, in Brighton. Really? Oh, yeah. 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 It was the Indian Landing is in Brighton. By the time I gra- we got out of Indian Landing, we were in the Penfield School District. Okay. So we got a you know it, that changed while we were there. My right. brother went to Brighton High, I went to Penfield to. High. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Don Nesker built this radio station in the corner of the room, and my best friend and I, Pete Burrell, who, who comes up here as well, uh, we just were infatuated with this. Uh, and was it the technology? The yeah, emergency just, technology? You know, or the well, hearing your voice, you know, yeah. speaking. <laughs> I'd, I'd gotten that from my father's appliance store. I was so thrilled to, to answer the phone right. and pick up a microphone. Think say, about that. Ed Zimmer, yeah. call on it, too. <laughs> I mean, and, you, you, and you hear your voice so come bad. out of the PA. Yeah, I think it was that's cool. Still, it was that's cool. Yeah, that's yeah. the fascination yeah, of it, to hear your own voice. So, I remember uh, playing you know, with a reel to reel. You know, my father got an old reel to reel and just taping your own voice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was fun. Most so that's of us what hate we hearing so, our voices, yeah. though, right? So that's what happened to us. We ended up, uh, you know, when he t- took that radio station down because he couldn't leave it up all year, we were devastated. So we went to Radio Shack and like Lafayette Radio and all Allied Radio, all got catalogs, and literally in our, our bedrooms in our homes built little radio stations awesome. and put turntables. I still have the, the first little audio board that I put together. It's a wonder we weren't electrocuted to it. But, <laughs> um, but that was, you know, our way of, and we still have. And we, we still have reel to reel. I could go one up on the phone if I could find it, but we have reel to reel recordings because when we did a radio show in our in our homes, it was right. live to us. Yeah, I mean, and, and we would call the weather bureau and get the reel forecast. We would ad lib ads out of Reader's Digest. We would play the music, but we always recorded it on reel to reel because that was our way of being live. 
and I still have reel to reel tapes in, in my home studio yeah. that. I Most people would have up. thrown it away, right? right I would have right. been like, yeah, but no, you saved it. And <laughs> when precious. we look back at your career, yeah. you use clips of that, oh, I, which I, was I, fantastic. I should try, try to find that. You know what's amazing on. is it, you're 65. So you, you started in uh, an era of protest. You started in an era of war, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Vietnam yeah. War is just uh, is getting really hot. And, um, and I, so my question is really yeah. going, you know, some things stay the same, some things mm -hmm. change. What what doesn't change is you know, we're still having protests, you know, yeah, we're, we're, yeah. we're a country built on it. And there's the first amendment's a beautiful thing. And, you know, unfortunately we're still fighting wars and, yeah. you know, you would think over an expansion of a career like that, you'd only report on those things once, mm -hmm. you know, and, and utopia would come along. But unfortunately yeah. you, you got to report negative a lot. And what's that vicarious yeah. trauma? Like that's like, I mean, you've got to absorb that every day you're reporting. Yeah. And you know, that was, that was, but yeah. you know, that was when I look back on that and it was the, 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 the picture of me in the army came up a moment ago. Yeah. During this time, I mean, I, en I enlisted in the Army Reserve in 1967. So during all of these early years wow. when I'm covering protests, I'm also a member of the, of the Army. I'm a member of the service. So it's, um, I'm looking at, at it through both both right. uh, ends of the scope in a, in a way. And uh, I can still remember because this was, this was back when the teletype was the AP machine going in the corner mm -hmm. of the room. And we would just get a, a one or two line, you know, so-and-so from Rochester was killed in Vietnam today. Mm. And that's it. That's, that's it. All that's all you get. And Dick Burt, for the most part, because I still remember this, would then delicately look, we'd look it up in a mm. directory, and we'd call the family, right. uh, hoping that we weren't the ones Making to be them giving notified. them the news. Mm. Right. But we, if it's on the wire, we figured the family had known. And then trying to, to you know, Share ask that family, tell us a little bit more tell about us your son, or mostly sons in that time, uh, because we didn't just want to throw that name out yeah, there without some background. Thank you. And it was uh, you know, watching, the, you know, making those phone calls, mm. watching the, the anguish, uh, really brought him home more personally. I think, in a way, I think that set, and, and Jenny can relate to this, I think it set a tone for us in the whole news operation for years to come, because it didn't matter what the story was. It could be an accident. It could be a fire. It could be any fatality. It could be any trauma. Mm -hmm. But if we had had contact with the family, we knew what they were going yeah. through. Mm -hmm. And we always still, to this day, I've told reporters as recently as a few months ago before I left, imagine they, they, a family probably isn't watching, but think they are. Yeah. And do your story Definitely. as if they are watching because... Those, uh, you know, and that's what people, I think, remember for the most part. I still, I still get that, what you talked about at the very beginning. I think I, I appreciate that the most. People come up and say, we miss you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you see, how's retirement going? And I, I go <laughs> we got to ask that question. And, that, and that. then they expand to say they miss that. Mm -hmm. There was something in that era, and it's not just me alone, it, that era that gave people a confidence that they were, right. were getting – a full story. They were getting an unbiased story. Big journalism. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're fortunate. We built up a lot of goodwill, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, and that that is something that you never take for granted, right? That people trust you and they rely on you. And even if you pick up the phone and make that call and they're not comfortable talking, they might because they saw yeah. us do it once yeah. or twice yeah. before, right? And you never ever take that for yeah, granted. Yeah, our, you know, I mean, we won't. We, yeah. I love to talk to the media. I love to tell them everything. We, the, the, that's not the transparent. That's, that's, that only makes sense to be mm -hmm. transparent as a government agency. But, you know, I can have a conversation like you two or Gary Craig or, yeah. or I'll just name 100 names that I know. Like, I could tell you this much. I'm going to give it, but I can't tell you this much. And we trust yeah. each other. Like, I'm not hiding anything. You just know what I got to do. And I know what you got to do. You need a story. Yeah. You need information for the public. That trust is absolutely yeah. essential when I'm you know, I always appreciated that about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I sure did. Thank you. I can Thank you. I can still remember, and, it, and it, it would never fly today, but I can remember calling the medical examiner on many mm -hmm. occasions and saying, has the person been identified yet? And they go, no. I said, well, by 11 o'clock, oh, you'll probably have it by 11. Mm -hmm. Can you give it to me now so I can write it? And I promise you I won't do it until mm -hmm. I call back. And I would that's always trust. call trust. back, mm -hmm. and I never failed them. They never oh, failed me because you, you never have, you never get the information. Never you again. Of course, and they it was that trust. I still run into. I, I mentioned the name. I, you know, I still run into families, of because I remember those names. Harold Honan. I don't know why I remember that <laughs> name. Harold Honan was in the Miami's. Oh, he passed. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. Laughing. I'm yeah. Right now. And and uh, and 
I ran. I think it was his daughter that came up to me at mm-hmm. some event and said, "You used really? to call my father." And that, but it was that kind of um, of a time. We used to do rounds. We would call yeah. the sheriff's department every yeah. single office at a certain in time. the Rochester yeah. Police Department, the medical examiner, all yeah. the area sheriff's departments. We don't really do that anymore. Any, anything we should know. I remember answering that phone. You know, yeah. Oh, anything yeah. Anything we should know. That was, yeah. the, one, that was the, the, you know, the, the, the one story we we still talk about. I always talk about the Allendale fire. Uh, we lived in Brighton, uh, off off Penfield Road, and I was sleeping one night. I was still at home. I hadn't moved out from my parents' home yet, and I heard fire sirens. And I just pick up the phone, called the dispatcher because I had you know memorized the number by then, and he said, "Don, Allendale School is ablaze." Wow. And I grabbed my 16 millimeter Bolex camera, with, and I had, you know, I had no idea how. You know, that that nothing's automatic, so you have to set the f-stop for the lighting and everything else. I just grabbed that camera. In fact, that might be there. It is there. I just opened up the lens mm-hmm. and ran out there. Wow. Charlie Plannard, who lived not far from there, missed it that yes. night. He Ooh. was at Channel 8. Oh. Was, so they were very. He was very upset with. You uh, scooped with Charlie. That. But here again, it was just that was just hearing a siren mm-hmm. and calling the fire dispatcher because they knew the number, and you know we were onto a, a and story. Because you had a relationship, yeah, yeah. with yeah. the person on the other end of the phone, which is huge. It's absolutely huge. And any any function, yeah. any job, mm-hmm. right? Trust is a and, and part part apart. of that too. Yeah. Is now you know people don't stay as long to build those relationships. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, reporters now aren't, aren't looking no, for absolutely. Absolutely. 58 years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's no, for sure. Nobody does anything for They're hoping years. to no, live 58 years. True. Yeah. Very God, true. Oh. Yeah, and it popped up as you were talking about the fire is Attica. Yeah. Mm. You know, your experience yeah. there, again, absorbing trauma, but that that was, that's yeah. national, not world history, right? That's And that was, you know, look at the challenges of that. And I can still remember, you know, again, they sent me with a camera all alone in the news car. And, you know, no cell phones. Uh, Mm -mm. So I'm I'm driving, I think it was Route 98 is the one that goes down Mm -hmm. from Batavia. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm driving down that road. And the two-way radio, now I'm out of range from Rochester. But I hear people. So I I said, who is this? They go, well, who are you? It was the helicopter for, I think, Channel 2 or Channel 4 wow, in Buffalo. Oh, really? Yeah. Same frequency. And same frequency. Yeah. So they, I said, well, I'm, I've am i got to find the prison. They go, well, you in, you in that little white car with <laughs> the oh, yellow. Come on, really? The and only they, one going they, towards the said, prison? Take your next I got GPS from the sky. <laughs> <laughs> they guided me <laughs> into, into, Attica, into prison. Attica prison. But when, I, you know, when you get there, you shoot whatever film you have. That one, I always, yeah, we use that mm. one stand up in front because I, had, I was there alone. So I had a... You know, what I would do is take a, a light stand and frame it in front of the prison and set it to my height. Really? And then I would start the film camera, walk around, stand where the light stand was, turn it over so you can't see it, put it down the ground, and I'm there all alone. You know, looks like I have a, you know, of course. A whole people crew. Do, people do that now routinely because you yeah. can see it. You were doing selfies before selfies. Yeah, that was yeah it, right? exactly. That was it. Exactly. But he was then, one you know, man banding it. But then you're in Attica. You, you get back in the car. You... You have to drive all the way back to Rochester. You're going to have to take an hour, hour and a half to process that right. film. Mm-hmm. And then we look at the film and decide what we're going to use and put on the air. So we had, in a sense, you know, you didn't have that sense of immediacy, but you certainly had a chance to get all the mm-hmm. information and not rush to judgment in getting a story right. on the air. And so it, it was kind of a, you know, I think in that case, a, a benefit for the, for the viewer. Yeah, little time to process it in this yeah. day and age. You yeah. know, reporters don't even have a moment to think about what they're seeing and hearing, and they have to put it out on yeah. social media, share it with the newsroom. I mean, yeah, our, our desire to be first, mm-hmm. or just a desire, you know, because it's, yeah. it's a competitive business, right? It's an expectation yeah. now, yeah. right? Yeah. People yeah. want you. that Thank news you. immediately. In our world, too, an officer involved in critical mm-hmm. incident or something yeah. like that, mm-hmm. they want the facts right now, and like, you know, we debate. Fast or yeah. accurate? Which mm-hmm. one are we going to be here? Because sometimes they compete with each other. Yeah. And that's a big challenge for news now, I think, because and I, even even more recently, I kept saying at 6, people all say, well, it's the newscast of record. People want to know what happened today. People already know by 6 o'clock yeah. pretty much what's, what's <clears> happening. That's your business. That's correct. They get it off the phone. So you have to kind of take it one step beyond that or add some other story. I find, it's interesting now. I'm more of a, you know, I've always been a viewer. But I'm more of a of a different kind of viewer now, and it's, it's almost you know there is so much violence now. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've gone through it here, and you 
you don't ever want to become numb to it. But right. as a viewer, you look and you go, yeah. you start punching around. You say, oh, I wonder if somebody's doing something else because I, this is wearing yeah. on me a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to ignore it. We can't ignore it as journalists. But it's a, you know, it's a, I think, a challenge to bring something to the viewer that takes them beyond that. Lifts, lifts them out of it right. a little well, bit too. That was really the idea behind your bright spot. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, you yeah. had you had that sense way back when yeah. that we needed to give people something to look forward to yeah. and be happy about and to celebrate. Um, and I give you credit for that because yeah. nobody was doing it back then. Right. The positive yeah. news. We always so, have what we call the kicker. Mm -hmm, People would always have, and usually it was a funny story at the end of the day. What's your kicker going to right. be? Today? <laughs> What's the funny story you're going to end the show with? Because it, and I, and I always took that to heart because people. You know, you'll remember probably what how the newscast opened, mm -hmm. and you'll probably remember how it closed. Right. And in between, you know. Whether well, sports people will be upset with me, but no. <laughs> but in between is not going to be as memorable unless there's some moment that that comes in out. In between the sports, so guys. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, but so at at one point I said, well, rather than just be a funny story, why don't we highlight somebody who is doing something for someone? And it can be a struggle at, at times. It was a struggle. It was a struggle as we changed owners. We changed owners once, and a new consultant came in and said, <clears throat> you need to end the show with. The hard news and telling people what's coming up for the next. Uh, you tell Don. And, uh, <laughs> oh, God, and, and they, they said, just they eliminate did. it. Did and, they really? You know, and I said, uh, and I said, let me give me 30 seconds. Because we used to do a minute, minute and a half. I said, just give me a moment at the end of the show to do that. But I want to keep ending it that way. And we were able to do that. And it was always, and I still want to, I remember, we've, I've talked about it before, but I remember 9-11. Mm -hmm. And when we, uh, we were putting the newscast together that day, they said, well, how are we going to end this? We can't do a bright spot. And I said, well, we always do a bright spot. Well, how can you possibly do a bright spot on 9-11? I said, I don't know, but give me time. Uh, we'll, we'll come up with something. And as that day unfolded, we saw our community react. There were react. a lot of bright spots. We saw the flags going up. We saw people holding vigils. We saw out of that tragedy – the openness of people and how their hearts were pouring out. And that became our bright spot that day. Um, and, it, you know, it didn't diminish the tragedy that had happened. But it certainly said to, I think, a lot of us, you know, there, there's always something we can look for. There's always mm -hmm. some bright light, some bright spot, even in the midst of, of tragedy that we can, can look for. And in some cases, it's just the compassion of, of people responding to it. We saw that in so many, so many stories. And Kaylee Polton is, is the one I remember the most, how this community oh, just rallied. embraced that story. Yeah, I mean, it was her. unbelievable. Yeah, and that's the thing I remember most about 9-11. I mean, obviously the tragedy of the day. But the, the, the images I choose to remember are oh. people lining up at blood banks, right. mm -hmm. people putting flags outside their home, mm -hmm. uh, making flags to yeah. sell, to give to the families. Mm -hmm. Those are the stories that we covered that day, and those are the ones that I choose yeah. to remember. People going to church. Remember right. churches yeah. open? Yeah. People went in droves to services. I mean, those are those are the things that I hold yeah. on to, I think, because it can be hard. Yeah. You know that, yeah. Yeah. Sheriff. I mean, I would often go home at night, and that's when it would hit me. Yep. That's yeah. when I would process it. That's when I would cry. I know, I know I just told that story, but I didn't, yeah. I didn't absorb it. Yeah. Now, now I'm mm -hmm. absorbing it. And look at the ice storm. Yeah. Yeah. The ice storm in 91. I mean, when you look back, I, the stories I remember again, people putting extension cords mm -hmm. across, across the, the street, street to their the neighbors. neighbors right? uh, you know, we, we just, you know, we had Patrice Walsh and Jane and you. Mm -hmm. We had so many people that, that it was in their blood to do those so kinds of stories. We were, we're very time, blessed. I mean, people yeah. say, how could you go 58 years? And I said, I was... Oh, the characters you had were... Uh, very blessed. Yeah. I mean, Jim... <laughs> Jim no offense. No yeah. offense. But, I mean, Jim yeah. Redman. I mean, but uh, people oh, stayed geez. with us and were dedicated That's to amazing. it. Kept me going. And, yeah. I, and I remember, I look back on Bright Spots at 25, 30 years, whatever it was. Inevitably, I would end them expressing gratitude for the people I worked with. Yeah. And, and not that I don't have gratitude for everyone there now, it changes quickly. Mm -hmm. And so people, I, I mean, I know you walked in the newsroom you know, for my <laughs> retirement, like, and you walk around the desks. You got to introduce yourself oh, again. I, like you a, do. Mm -hmm. yeah. they, yeah. Know, they know Ginny, but Ginny doesn't. Right. I think, you know what? Sadly, another, yeah, it's only a, matter of time. another year, a year from now, if I walk in that newsroom, there'll be four or five people that I know 
yeah. but it won't be the it's same. Life. Which makes it easier in some ways. I mean, you still miss yeah. that daily opportunity to mm-hmm. let people know what's going on. Um, is is that amazing. what you miss about retirement? Like, because we said the first yeah. thing you walked in, how is retirement? Yeah. You said you hate those <laughs> those words like, now. You know what? Because it's the only thing people can think of to say right. when I'm in. Yeah. I, I was I was at Wegmans the other day. <laughs> the irony of it, and I wish I kicked myself for not taking a selfie. I'm pushing. Mary had gone somewhere, and I'm pushing her. I'm pushing a cart down an aisle, <laughs> and as I come to the end of the aisle, I almost run into another guy pushing his cart. <laughs> It's Norm Silverstein, oh, who, yeah. Oh, yeah. who is retiring after 28 yeah. years mm-hmm. at WXXI. Mm-hmm. Did you ram him? <laughs> <laughs> and we just said, is this it? Right. Is, this, <laughs> is this our future? <laughs> is, this, is this our retirement? Here we are, two, right. two old guys just uh, putting around. Uh, right. And, of course, right now at Pittsburgh, they're changing you know, they have to rearrange everything to match other stories, so nobody knows where Wherever anything yeah. is. And, <laughs> and people are bumping into each other trying to figure out what's going that's on. That's awesome. So I said, you know, that's – but but wherever I am, people, how is retirement? How, and I – and the only reason I hesitated because I, I said, well, I really – I don't know yet. Mm-hmm. It's only been a few weeks, and I, I purposely kind of just – want to kind of ride out and see what happens. Uh, Always retirement. Yeah. Yeah. Can't I get that question. Then. I'm like, ah, I'm not really retired. Yeah. But, I mean, I, yeah. I brought, I brought my, the book that I wrote for yeah. the Ark, Sibling's Christmas Adventure. That's and awesome. uh, Carol de Molen, who, who was with the Ark at the time and helped me do this, called the other day. When are we working on the next oh, book? Good. What are we doing? Go. Great I said, well, idea. I, don't know. I mean, this was kind of a once-in-a-lifetime story for me. But there are people that want to know what's, yeah, what's, what's the next, next one. Is there something you could do? And I do have a whole collection of stories. I think I've shared before that that I have short stories I did mostly in church. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lake Avenue Baptist Church and later at Penfield Presbyterian. I would call the, the pastor during the week, and he would tell me the topic of the sermon. And I would write and give that following Sunday a, a children's be. story really? that would parallel the, the theme of the sermon. And I still, you know, some of them are, uh, you know, an ancient five and a half floppies. I have to, but but the the premise was, and that was kind of the, you know, then the kids would come up and I would share that story. So if you were an adult, you'd get the sermon twice. You get the children's version right, right. from me and from you know George Hill or Zane Bollinger, the pastor, is the other version. But I, I still enjoy those moments with children and. Uh, and being able to communicate with children. I don't know if that's a good sign or bad. I never, <laughs> I never grew up. I love that. That's what but, the world needs yeah. right now, right? Yeah. This is why there's no dirt on this man, Todd. You see? There's no dirt. See? Okay, he's talking to the pastor uh, every week. I go, all right, all right, maybe you never did it, but I know there's a picture out there with a mullet or something like that. No, I got nothing. Mm, nope. I'm like, wow, no. the vault. <laughs> my, the vault. My, 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 own, my, only, uh, my only hair growth was it, it, two weeks in the summer. We always went to boot camp. Boot camp. All right. And so we went up, it was camp drum then, now it's fork drum. And so I decided with that two weeks, I was going to grow a mustache. And I came back to work and it wasn't, you know, I went out and did some reporting and, and news, went back in the news. The director said, take that yeah. off. And everybody's laughing at me, you know, because it really didn't, didn't grow in very well at all. <laughs> so by the time I went on live at six, I had shaved it off. But all the, no sto- all the stories during the day, <laughs> gotcha. and just kind of a light mustache, people go, what happened to you? Oh, man. I said, you know, we couldn't but, dig up one of those, huh, guys? I know. <laughs> but that was, uh, and I did, you know, that was it, was, it was interesting, too. We talked about that, carving your own niche. Uh, you know, our, our unit in Penyan was a combat engineering unit and a construction engineering unit later, placed on selective reserve status because mm-hmm. if they needed to build a runway in Vietnam, we were going to go over cool. and do that. Yeah. And uh, for some of you, know, there was no... Uh, classification in that unit for a PR person, but I created one. Really? <laughs> <laughs> there he goes because again, we, right? Because we, <laughs> we went to summer camp. I I was, it, young people are listening. This is how you yeah. create your yeah, future, right? It I, is. Get it. I was go never one for the bivouac. Track. I yeah. was never one to go out and camp. You know, I just it wasn't. Right. So I said I got to create something to to keep me busy when we're at camp. So it happened. It was Thanksgiving weekend. One, one of our weekend drills in Penyan. And when we were done, they were they were packing up the food. I said, "What do you do with this leftover food?" We had, well, we donated to the pantry in Penya. I said, "That's story. a great story." Yeah. <laughs> so I wrote up I wrote up a mock story news release, and uh, you know, presented it to the company commander, and 
next thing I know, I, I had a little, little desk and a chair. <laughs> <laughs> and, and when we went to when we went up to Camp Drum, I actually had one just one picture of me on the radio. I went to the local radio station and had them do a, a story on the Army Reserve. It was there up there for that week. Um, so kind of carving my own yeah. own niche. So you I got yourself an uh, office so job, right? It's a little bit of dirt. It's a little bit of, that's a little bit of the or dirt that sleep I was able to feel in the pup tent in the mud. <laughs> yeah. Not a bad move. Yeah. So Specialist 5, by the way, I noticed yes. your rank. There's yeah. not that existing anymore, a, a rank that doesn't even exist anymore. Yeah, right. I, I always wondered about five. that because it was really, you were parallel with the sergeant yeah, ranks yeah. going up. And I always wanted to be a sergeant. But I just, no, you're, you're whatever you're, Specialist, specialist five. you were spec five. Same picker. The, the irony. Sergeant, the, so irony okay. that, so. <laughs> the irony of that you'll, you'll love because I'm at, uh, at Fort Dix for basic. And as we get to the end of basic training for AIT, they said, you're going to go to radio school. I go, well, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Um, my, I should preface this that I quit the Boy Scouts, if you want some dirt. I quit the Boy Scouts. Okay, there we go. All right, I we quit got the some dirt. Boy, I didn't quit. They kind of recommended Don, I quit. Because Don, I know 58 years, but no one likes a quitter, dude. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait a minute. You buried the lead. Oh, no, they I'm, recommended that you quit? Wait, oh, okay, here we go. Oh, I didn't hear that. <laughs> I think it was for the first class badge, whatever it was, you had to learn Morse code. And mm, I just yeah. couldn't learn Morse code. And the guys, well, you have to complete this badge. You've been working on it for so long. Maybe <laughs> Scouts aren't cut out for you. And I said, maybe you're right, and I quit. <laughs> now, fast forward to Fort Dix, I'm completing basic training, and they're going to send me to radio school, and I'm psyched. That's what I want to do for a career. Ten weeks of more, more school. school. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get your badge? I know. That was good. That was good, yeah. Anyway, back to the Boy Scouts. <laughs> Can I get my badge? I should go back now. Yeah. But you do get pretty – it's, it's like learning a foreign language. Yeah. I mean, oh, you yeah. really have to be – I still try, cause I, and I'm not sure what, when I listen to police scanners, I hope, because every once in a while they go into a little Morse code you hear on the police scanners. Yeah. I try to figure out what it is, but I can't keep up as, as well as I used to on that one. That's funny. So how's retirement? Let's, let's follow <laughs> back up on this. Um, you don't, you haven't, it sounds like you haven't hit your routine. Like it's no. all so new, you've been busy, it's the summer. Do you have any plans? The book maybe? The, you know, I think the book, um, you know, I'm not sure you know, if I were a person who listened to a lot of podcasts, and I, and I don't listen to any, but I realize that a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. uh, and so my experience is like this. I've been a guest on podcasts. I've never really had the challenge of putting one together. I, I did a podcast the other day. I should remember the woman's name. She, I, This woman, Zuzu, was the character in It's a Wonderful Life really? in the movie. Literally. She is the one that says... Every time the bell rings, He's the angel, angel gets his wings. wings. This little girl is now an adult Come in on. Hollywood and does a podcast. Called me up and I did a I did a podcast. I'm not even sure when it's going to going to air. Wow. But I'm thinking, you know, but here again, here's someone that her claim to fame. I, mean, I think she went right. on to do other things, but her claim to fame is that's the little girl with Jimmy Stewart. Wow. Who rang the bell on the Christmas tree and it's a wonderful life. And so she does a whole podcast. Now. Similar story in Lowellville. New York is Charlie from Willy Wonka. Oh, okay. Charlie's a veterinarian up in uh, in Loveville. No kidding. Uh, yeah, yeah. Small world. Wow, it yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> County Sheriff uh, and I yeah. have friends, and he, he's a cow farmer, a, a farmer, and that's where he takes his animals. Wow. That's Charlie. Amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> so maybe a something. podcast in your future? But, you know, people talk about it. It was funny. Wanda Miller and I got together at Marketplace Mall to uh, – to, you know, Your before, final show, final yeah. Final show. And it was funny. We we started. People kept saying, "Well, what how, what are you going to talk about?" I said, "I don't know." The, the producer said, "Well, you want some questions, topics?" I said, "Just no. put, 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 put Wanda and I in a room, <laughs> turn the mic on." And in this case, they put us up. They rebuilt the stage that we had at Marketplace, and we sat down and we just went for an hour. And you know, I don't know how they ever edited it all down. But um, and she kept saying, "Well, we could do." It. And I said, "Well, I mean, who knows?" Um, I guess I probably would probably need to be convinced that there would be a market for that. Right. And well, most, you create one. Yeah, and most of what I've done, I think most of what I've done is based on my own experiences, and I don't have a lot of experience listening mm -hmm. to podcasts. When I exercise, I listen to music. Mm -hmm. And I actually was thinking today, maybe I'll try listening to some podcasts. And uh, you know, it might might. They're so me some diverse. Ideas. Anything I you want to hear, yeah. 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 you yeah. can get a podcast on anything you mm -hmm. want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. They're they're excellent. There's some really good ones yeah. out there, yeah. and of course yours is you know well, number yeah. one on my list. That's no, it. Number one on no, Spotify. I, yeah. just, geez, I so appreciate that plug. 
<laughs> and this is, I mean, I look at this. this you know, this is, this is the wave of the future. This yeah. is the way people, they want, I think, the sense of intimacy mm-hmm. when they, and informality. Mm-hmm. I, I'm still amazed that when I started 58 years ago, oh, you well, sat well. behind a desk and read stories and mm-hmm. eventually introduced reporters because we didn't, you know, we didn't have didn't that have many. Day. And 58 years later, we're still sitting behind a desk reading the news. And I, I have to think there's, there's a market somewhere for a setting like this and just yeah. tell people what happened mm-hmm. today and not, you know. Oh, there definitely is. Yeah. You can grab any subject. And yeah. Just conversations people yeah. are interested in having, maybe experts or people yeah. with the know, mm-hmm. a conversation, pick a and sport. Bright, bright a spot. Yeah. I mean, that's the one thing I did. I thought, oh, well, that would be great. Could to you do, do a bright spot? Of, yeah. You know, could I do bright spots? Oh, uh, the people would love that. They would enjoy you know, the yeah. Would the station sue me <laughs> if I did? But it really was a term. And it's not a you know. It's a term people use. So it's right. not. It's not one that's. that's uh, it's not patented. You know, not or patented. Or anything like that. <laughs> it, was, it was Marv Jacoby. I think I've told that. Things with touchy rolls, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about your touchy rolls. Marv in a Jacoby, a wonderful friend in Rotary, and uh, uh, used to go to the JCC. He's passed on now. But he came up to me one day and just said, "You know, you ought to, you ought to have some good news." He says the news is so depressing. You ought to have you ought to have a little bright spot every day. And I, I, I said, you know what? That would be good great idea, podcast. Marv. And right. that's what we'll yeah. we'll do it. But I actually listen. got the I got the website brightspot.news years ago just for the heck of it. Yeah. And still have it. So right. there you, you, go. you never know. And I think you know, maybe there's a so people could it could be from anywhere. You know, just uh, I think there's the a niche, right? There, I think yeah, people want to hear so. that. They yeah. they love the stories, your poems. Your poems, oh, are, yeah. your poems are amazing. You, know, you just make them up at a dinner, yeah. and then you kick it out. That, the talent is amazing, yeah. Yeah. literally. And then one more, we got a, we're we running out of tape here, apparently, according <laughs> to my producers. But we could talk all day. This is fascinating yeah. for me. I love this. Thank you. Uh, the whole Rotary thing, and yeah. you know, you're, you're, you're an icon in the Rotary community, and a lot of people don't know about the Rot- uh, Rotarians mm-hmm. and yeah. what you guys do and, and what we do, I should say. That um, was the one thing. On retirement, we had the party out at our Sunshine Camp. And the one line I used, I said, if I could get this many people who have never been to the camp to come out here, I'd go back it's to work. I'd go back to work and impressive. retire again exactly. just yeah. to get them to come back out here, because it is. Uh, I, and I've watched that grow. I've watched yeah. it start at Duran. Was it when Duran East from Beach when we first started, uh, and then we moved out there in the early '70s, and it's just it's grown precious. every year. And when you, you know, people always concentrate on the campers, and they forget what that does for the parents right. mm-hmm. what it does for the family you know the, the the child with a challenge gets a week to be with their peers and other mm-hmm. kids that are just like them but the parents get a break that they oh, don't God. get the rest of the year they they have the assurance that that child is taken care of it's happy. and it's happy, happy. Yeah. yeah and they can That's breathe huge. just a little and, and yeah and the yeah. camp has grown so oh, much yeah. in your time, and you played a big part in that. They do a 5K around it now, a 5K <laughs> race, and I got lost. I mean, I've been to the camp many times. <laughs> I know, it. yeah. I'll that just do the so nature big, trail. So new, yeah, it's a beautiful run, by the way. Yeah. It's throw, beautiful yeah. there. Yeah. So do you miss it at all, the daily grind? You know, well, I, you know, the, the pattern, the, the, I was blessed being able to cut back and just do the six because that enabled us to kind of adjust our lifestyle for the last two years. Mm-hmm. And and I, as you know, I'm a, a person of routine. So I still I go to the JCC. No, I, I went to oh, I go yeah. to the JCC every day, and, and they set the clock by me when I come in at one thirty or two. Today I was I went early because I wanted to be down. And people, what are you doing hey, here? You messed them all up. What happened? Why, why are you here so early? <laughs> so I would always go to the JCC, walk in mm-hmm. scuzzy, have my you know change of clothes with me, and then at three thirty, four o'clock, go to work. And then lately, after the six, come home. Mm. So now I'm still home in the morning. Always was. That hasn't changed much. Uh, then I go. To, Mary sometimes goes more than a couple of days a week now. So some days we'll go together. Hmm, is there on a those reason days, why she's leaving the yeah. house more often? <laughs> on, on those on those days, we might stop at Wigman's. But I'm, now I'm home. I kind of slow down a little bit and get home maybe by five. So I'm home right. a little earlier. So the evening routine isn't much changed. Um, but I think she worries that I'm going to need more to occupy the day, right. and that will come. I just yeah. said oh, I don't. Well, want you'll to, fill the gap. I don't want to plunge into it and then Mm-mm. start something and then stop. And I, like I said, it. let me let me see what kind of unfolds and, and comes to pass. You've earned this time, and I think it's wise not yeah. to jump into anything. I really do. Mm-hmm. Because but I think the Jenny, answer may surface. I think Jenny found your niche, though. I, I truly believe that bright yeah. spot podcast. Yeah. Even a five minute spot every week. 
would be just something, something yeah something, something we all and, deserve, you know, we, we need it we need yeah. it right? and it can be it can be something that can go beyond this, this community it could mm-hmm. be people you know if you can if you can make it work it could be something where people out of town could say here's Somebody doing so it's a simple premise. Mm-hmm. You've, been, you've been innovating yeah. yourself for decades, right? I mean, you, you innovated, you <laughs> yes. created the every yeah. environment we talk yeah. about. You, uh, you yeah. seen yourself create, but I got to wrap this up. Uh, I, I was, it's, 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 it's I'm beyond words. To have you two in the studio <laughs> on a podcast is like humbling, and it's, it uh, was scary before I came in here. A little easier now, uh, but thank you, thank you for joining us. Thanks for sharing who you thank are you. And, and, and behind the scenes. We didn't get a chance to talk much about Mary, and I apologize about that. I definitely want to talk about your beautiful bride and. And how we're blessed and uh, by you having partners. You got to get both wives in here, both oh, Mary, that's it. Yeah. And oh, Mary, Mary, Mary. Yeah. That could be dangerous. Why don't they that just take dangerous. over the microphone? That yeah, might we, be really. Actually, we turn the mics on. We'll go get a cup of coffee and we'll come. Wait, I didn't say that. <laughs> years ago, years ago, when the the show that followed the eleven o'clock news was Mary Hartman, Mary oh, Hartman. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Mary Hartman, Mary, Mary Hartman. Hartman. That uh, was the eleven o'clock. Mm-hmm. He's, well, going, he's was... going. What show was that? <laughs> <laughs> what show? <laughs> The young ones in the room. Uh, but thank you. Thank you. I think this was wonderful. I'm yeah. happy to be a part of it. Yeah, thank you for uh, backing me up on this. I was a little nervous to do it by myself. Uh, so good you, to have you here. Are you your backup? You're my backup. All right. You called for backup. <laughs> I'll raise your right hand. I'm going to swear you in right now. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank very you much. both. You're both icons in our community. You're and I very hope kind. the public really enjoys it. Likewise. Likewise, yes. Sheriff. God bless, friends. Thank you. Yeah.